Did you see all of this about Michael Thomas? Uh, no. Okay, let me let me read you the headline here. This is from CBS Sports. Patrick Walker uh, wrote about it, I believe, Sunday morning. It says, St. Michael Thomas ignored calls from team and trainer for months following 2020 season per report. Now, the beginning of this, I'm going to read just a touch of it. It says, at this point, it's fair to question just how long Michael Thomas will be in a New Orleans Saints uniform. The two sides had a very contentious 2020 that included rumors about a rather sizable fracture in the relationship, and things were only made worse by the lack of availability of the all-pro receiver, having logged only five starts due mostly to a nagging ankle injury. The Saints were looking forward to Thomas getting the injury resolved quickly when the season concluded, but he opted to do anything but. It says the 28-year-old waited until June to undergo the procedure to repair his ankle, and that decision not only means he'll miss significant time this coming season, but it infuriated the Saints in the process. As it turns out, there's more to the story because Thomas reportedly ignored calls from the organization, including the trainer, wide receivers coach, and even head coach Sean Payton, per Jeff Duncan of NOLA.com. Peyton voiced his displeasure with the delay in surgery, and he was unequivocal in his frustration. Quote, it appears we're going to have to spend some time without him, Peyton said. It's disappointing. We should have liked that to have happened earlier, or we would have liked uh, that to have happened earlier, and quite honestly, it should have. I'm going to leave it at that. I. So we talked about this last year because we could not figure out exactly what was happening with Michael Thomas. Nobody really knew what the injury situation was. Nobody knew why he wasn't... At games, it, it was just a disaster. And for fantasy guys, it, it was it was a train wreck, right? Because this is a, a big-time wide receiver as far as fantasy numbers go before last season. And this situation, if you are an employee of the Saints and you are ignoring calls from the coach, the team trainer, your position coach, the organization, it's just all over, you don't go get your surgery done until June, so now you're going to miss more time in the regular season this year I, this is this is weird. What what are your thoughts on on all of this? I, I mean, we've seen it before where where a player wants one thing or has the, an expectation of one thing, and a team has an expectation of another, and it just falls apart, and usually it ends ugly. That this doesn't shock me. I don't. You know, it's sad because I think. Michael Thomas is a great player, and I think Sean Payton's probably one of the best offensive minds in football. And, and you know, I don't think those two things, you know, aren't separate of one another. But it probably looks like this is the end of Michael Thomas and the Saints. I mean, it's, you know, that's, that's, pretty, that's pretty clear. If, if, you, if you're a football player and you have an injury, what – what do you think? And I understand that we've got, you know, all this COVID stuff going on. I understand that it's a different time right now than typical. Why on earth would you not get the surgery done before June so that you don't have to miss more time? It, it, remember, he just signed that huge deal. I, I don't know. But that's why you do it, Gary, is you don't want to play for this team. And if you have surgery, you don't have to, and they have to pay you. Yeah, I guess. I mean, it, I, I don't know as much about contracts in the NFL as I thought that I did because it seems like if he's not playing, it, if you delay an injury, I, you know, I, I don't even know how to how to quantify this. I don't know how to begin to even figure out because it was 2019 when he signed the deal. And now he only started five games last year. It's going to be a while before he's back this year. Like, there's got to be something going on in there where it, this has to impact him at some point, right? I don't know why it would impact him. I mean, he's, you know, he's trying to get 100% healthy, whatever. He's doing it however he feels the best way to do it. That's his body, and he has the right to do that. He's obviously manipulating the system. I mean, he's, he's manipulating the situation pretty easily, but that's that's the that's the devil you deal with with these contracts. Is there's nothing you can do if they're hurt. Can't punish them if they're hurt. Okay, and you can't tell a guy you should have had surgery back then. No, I have the right to try and see if I can rehab this without surgery. I don't want to have surgery if I don't have to have it. So you're you're allowed to say these things. So there's no punishment for them. You know, outside of the fact that it, it might be a black mark on you know them publicly. And other owners might say, oh, these people, you know, tough to deal with, don't want to deal with, you know, 
somebody who's going to do that. I don't want to sign him when he becomes available for trade or sign. But but at the end of the day, if if you're going to make him happier than they are, somebody's going to think I can make this guy happy, and then they are going to sign him. And so so it's not going to hurt him in any way, shape, form, or fashion. Like you're talking about, can he can he go 18 months without playing football and like still be good at football? Yeah, let's do it all the time. I, I pulled up his contract on uh, SpotTrack.com, and his base salary this year is one million dollars. He's got a four million dollar signing bonus, a workout bonus of two hundred thousand, restructuring of four point nine million, and his cap hit for this season is ten point one million. Now his dead cap is thirty two point six million, and the yearly cash details here is twelve point eight million. Uh, it looks like twenty twenty two is when his biggest biggest increase is right his cap hit for 2022 is 24.7 million so the extension that they signed back in 2019 appears to have been I I think that it's a I think it really goes into effect next year for 2022 and if that's the case then okay all all the money's backloaded but but at the end of the day if he's hurt he's still on the team he still gets that money yeah, I mean his contract. He's an un, unrestricted free agent in 2025. He got 35.64 million dollars guaranteed at signing. Uh, that was his signing bonus plus 2019 salary and 2020 salary plus three million of his 2021 salary. So, I it, it's it's strange. This if, is a weird if situation. You can, if you can get him healthy and you think that the relationship is broken to a point you can't salvage it, the thing that I'm upset about if I'm the owner or the GM or the or the head coach is is now we can't even trade your ass this year if you're about to go into, you know, we need to get you healthy so we can get you out of here, you know? Yeah. And, and because because I, I'll, I'll tell you this, like, you know my opinion on this. I, I, think, I think great wide receivers are special, but they're not so special. I'm, I'm not afraid to – I'm not – I think I can replace them. Okay? I feel yeah. comfortable enough thinking that scheming, and offensive play calling design can can replace some of these guys. The drop off from a tier one great wide receiver to a tier three great wide receiver isn't the end of the world. You know, yeah. it's not catastrophic to your football team. And so I, but he's good enough to where a team that's close to competing, hell, they might throw you a first round pick, maybe a first and a third, you know, for him. And if he's not healthy, then you can't get that. Yeah, no, you're you're right. You're right. Uh, his cap hit for next season. So this season it's ten point one million. Next year it is twenty four point seven million. His dead cap though goes from thirty two point six this year down to twenty two point seven next year, and then it continues to decline after that. So he uh, his base salary, by the way, for next season fifteen point three million dollars. This year it's one million. Next year fifteen point three. So you know it's it's a lot of money. And and maybe he's just wanting to make sure he's healthy for the stretch run of his contract, but yeah, I just just crazy. I, I'm with you. Like this this would make me wary if I'm a if I'm a New Orleans Saints administrative guy, right? If I'm wanting to get rid of him, I can't get rid of him now because he's injured. So is what it is. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter at Gary WCE at Chris B. Giannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.